All right, thanks, guys. The Packers take on the Bears. 8-20 Eastern kickoff on Thursday night. The Bears are minus three, totals 46. Now, we did see a one-point fade of Chicago in the early wagering. We also saw movement upward on the total. The Bears open minus four, down to minus three. Total open 44 and a half, up to 46. 54% of the consensus is leaning toward the Packers. 56% shaded toward the under. Right now, Green Bay is plus 140 on the money line. We have Aaron Rodgers for the Packers, Mitch Trubisky for the Bears. Trubisky completed 67% of his passes last year. He threw 24 touchdown passes. He was 11-3 straight up in 14 regular season starts. Now, Aaron Rodgers, obviously with a kind of a, an abbreviated season last year, uh, he completed 62% of his passes. Uh, 400, uh, I'm sorry, 4,442 yards passing and 25 touchdowns. Now, the Bears finished first in the NFC North. They were 12-4 and four straight up last year. They did lose a wild card game to the Eagles, the old uh, double doinker uh, game. Uh, Cody Parkey uh, costing the Bears that one. But regardless, uh, the Bears... Arguably a better team than Philadelphia in that spot there. They were a great team last year. They uh, successfully covered the number in nine out of their final 11 uh, games. They were 5-1 and one against the spread in their last six at home. They were also 7-0 uh, and oh in their 7-0 and oh against the spread in their last seven ball games, taking on a opponent from the NFC North. Now the Packers on the other side, uh, they lost nine out of their last 10 on the road, dating back the past couple of seasons. Uh, so if you're into historical trends, uh, certainly uh, Green Bay, not a great road team as of late. Uh, of course, they finished fourth in the NFC North. McCarthy was fired in the middle of the season. Uh, they finished 6-9-1 and one on the year, and they failed to cover in seven out of their last eight ball games, taking on an opponent from the NFC North. Now, total-wise, Green Bay is 7-3 to the under in their last 10, 80% to the under in their last five, taking on a divisional opponent. The Bears on the other side, they arguably had the best defense in the National Football League last year, and they might just have it again this year. Uh, they're 5-0 uh, to the under in their last five ball games. 5-0 to the under in their last five, taking on a divisional opponent. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean toward the home favorite in this one. Give me the Bears minus three and the under 46 in that contest there. And before we go ahead and move on, just going to take a quick time out and welcome you to the show. Got some lines of personal leans out for NFL Week 1 2019. I've been waiting all year long to do this podcast, and it is finally here. Now, before we go ahead and move on and get into some more uh, lines and personal leans right here on YouTube, I just want to take a quick time out and just remind you to check me out on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage. We do daily plays on that site. We have a bunch of different memberships and packages you could subscribe to. And they begin at just $1.99 per month. Now, we are hitting 63% in our last 16 board member plays. That's just one of those premium uh, packages and memberships that you can subscribe to right on Patreon. We're also hitting just around 60% in our last two months of underdog plays there as well. So if you like plus money, patreon.com slash brockpage, that might be a uh, great website to check out or at least take a look at link for that site is in the description section below there's also plenty of free content there as well including my current record all right guys let's go ahead and slide back into some more lines of personal leans for nfl week one all starts eastern standard time and on deck we've got the uh redskins taking on the philadelphia eagles now, that's going to be a 1 o'clock Eastern kickoff in South Philly. The Birds are minus 8.5, totals 45.5. We saw movement upward uh, when it comes to the spread. We also saw movement downward with regard to the total. The Eagles open minus 8, up to 8.5. Total open 46.5, down to 45 and a hook. 52% are leaning Washington, 66% shaded toward the under. Right now, the Redskins are plus 325 on the money line. We have Case Keenum for the Redskins, Carson Wentz for the Eagles. Uh, Wentz, once again, uh, kind of an abbreviated season last year. He completed 69% of his passes, 
Uh, he threw for a little bit over 3,000 yards, uh, 21 touchdowns to just seven interceptions. Uh, Philadelphia 5-0 and against the spread uh, in their final five games last year. Uh, they were 16-4 and straight up in their last 20 at home, dating back a pa- uh, the past couple of seasons as well. Now, the Redskins on the other side, mm, that is an organization in shambles right now. Losers in six out of their final seven games last year, uh, failing to cover in four out of their last five, taking on the Eagles. They finished in third place in the NFC East, 7-9 uh, and nine, uh, overall for the year. And, of course, Alex Smith, Snapped his leg like a twig in Joe Theismann-like fashion. Now, uh, the Redskins, their defense allowed 353 yards uh, per game last year on average. Uh, they are also uh, they were 29th in scoring. They scored just 17 points per, per contest on average per game. Now, when it comes to the total, the Redskins are 4-1 to the over in their last five in Philadelphia. So with all that in mind, I'm going to take the Eagles minus 8.5 and the over 45 and a half in that game. Next matchup, Ravens, Dolphins. And that's going to be a 1 o'clock kickoff in Miami. The Ravens are minus 5, totals 37 and a half. Uh, We saw a 1.5 point move toward Baltimore and movement upward on the total. The Ravens open 3.5, up to 5. Total open 37, up to 37.5. 66% of the consensus is leaning toward Baltimore. 67% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Finns are plus 205 on the muddy line. We have Lamar Jackson for the Ravens. Either Sam Rosen and or Fitzpatrick for the Dolphins. Maybe they're going to use both of them. Uh... Very uh, bizarre situation there. But regardless, uh, the Dolphins losers in five out of their final seven contests last year. Uh, 0-5 against the spread in their last five at home, taking on Baltimore if you're into historical trends. Now, the uh, Dolphins are just 1-5 straight up in their last six games, taking on the AFC North. And when it comes to the Ravens, they went 6-2 and two in their final eight games. They're also 8-0 and oh against the spread in their last eight, taking on the Dolphins. And when it comes to the total, the Ravens are 4-2 and two to the under in their final six. Uh, they arguably have the best defense in the AFC. Now, uh, Miami on the other side, 5-3 and three to the under in their last eight, 6-3 and three to the under in their last nine, taking on a member of the AFC. So with all that in mind, I'm going to lean Baltimore minus five in the under 37 and a half in that game. Next matchup, Bills, Jets, one o'clock, New York. The Jets are minus three, totals at 40. We saw a half a point fade of New York and movement upward on the total. The Jets open three and a half down to minus three, total open 38 and a half up to 40. are leaning Buffalo, 65% shaded toward the over. Right now, the Bills are plus 135 on the money line. We have Josh Allen for the Bills, Sam Darnold for the Jets. Uh, Sam Darnold had uh, just 17 touchdown passes to 15 interceptions. Uh, He also went 4-9 as a starter last year. Uh, The Jets were last in the AFC East, just 4-12. They finished seven games back of New England in that division. Uh, they're just 2-8 and eight against the spread in their last 10. 1-9 straight up in that same span of ball games. The Jets are just 1-6 straight up in their last seven, taking on an AFC opponent. And they failed to cover in six out of their last 10, taking on the Bills. Now, speaking of the Bills, pretty good defense. Their defense was second in yards allowed per game. And uh, they were right behind Baltimore in that a statistical category there. Uh, Buffalo, winners in two out of their last three games, 2-0 and against the spread in their last couple. They're also 6-4 and in their last 10, taking on the Jets. Now, total-wise, Buffalo 6-1 and of the under in their last seven when traveling. I'm going to lean toward the road dog in this one. Give me the Bills plus three in the under 40 in that game. Next matchup, Titans, Browns. A lot of eyes on this game. 1 o'clock Eastern kickoff in Cleveland. The Browns are minus 5.5, totals 45 and a hook. Now we saw movement toward Cleveland and movement toward the over in in the early wagering. The uh, Browns open minus 5, up to 5.5. Total open 45, up to 45 and a hook. Uh, 56% are leaning Browns, 58% shaded toward the over. Right now the Titans are plus 205 on the money line. Uh, We have Baker Mayfield for the Browns. 
who threw 14 picks last year. He was also sacked 25 times. Uh, the Browns finished third in the AFC North, just 7-8-1 and one on the year. Two and a half games back of Baltimore. They also dropped five out of their last seven at home, taking on Tennessee. Once again, if you're into historical trends. Uh, the Browns finished 29th in yards allowed last year. Meanwhile, the Titans on the other side, four months straight up in their final five ball games. They ranked eighth in yards allowed in 2018. And when it comes to the number, Tennessee's 5-1 to the over in their last six. They're also 8-2 and two to the over in their last ten, taking on Cleveland. I'm going to lean toward another road dog in this one. Give me the Titans plus 5.5 in the over 45 and a hook in that game. Next matchup, Falcons, Vikings. And that's going to be a 1 o'clock Eastern kickoff in Minnesota. The Vikings are minus 3.5, totals 47 and a hook. 55% are leaning Falcons, 56% shaded toward the over. Right now, Atlanta's plus 155 on the money line. We have Matty Ice for Atlanta, Kirk Cousins for Minnesota. Uh, Cousins went just 8-7-1 last year, 10 interceptions. He was sacked 40 times and uh, kind of choked in that. Uh, week 17 game if they won they were in and they couldn't get the job done now Matty Ice on the other side for Atlanta he ranked third in yards passing uh, he almost threw for 5,000 yards last year uh, he threw for 4,924 yards and 35 touchdown passes now Minnesota they did finish second in the NFC North they went eight seven and one once again they lost to Chicago to get in uh Minnesota's also, well, they went two and three straight up in their final five games, uh, three and four against the spread in their final seven. Now, Atlanta on the other side, obviously we know they have a slew of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, they also won their last three straight games to close out the season, covering in two out of those three. Now, total-wise, Atlanta just three and seven to the over in their last 10, taking on Minnesota, just three and five to the over in their last eight ball games as well. Now, Minnesota on the other side, just two and seven to the over uh, in their last nine. The Vikings are also just one and six to the over in their last seven, taking on the Falcons. I'm going to lean toward another road dog. Give me the Falcons plus three and a half in the under 47 and a hook. Next game. Uh, Rams, Panthers, 1 o'clock Eastern kickoff in Carolina. The Rams are minus 3, totals 50 and a half. We saw movement toward the Rams and movement downward on the total. Los Angeles open 2.5, up to minus 3. Total open 51, down to 50 and a hook. 66% are leaning Los Angeles, 51% shaded toward the under. Right now the Panthers are plus 130 for some money line cash. We have Jared Goff for the Rams, Cam Newton for Carolina. Now Goff finished the regular season 13-3 and as a starter. They were the uh, NFC champions. Uh, he threw for 4,600 yards, a little bit over 4,600 yards, uh, 4,688 to be exact. He also tossed 32 touchdown passes in the regular season. The Rams ranked second in yards per game at 421. They were also third in rushing, 4-1 against the spread in their final five games. They also went 4-1 against the spread in their uh, last five NFC opponents. Now, Carolina on the other side, they failed to cover in six out of their last eight ball games. Uh, they also dropped seven out of their last eight straight up to end the season. Uh, Total-wise, the Panthers 5-2 and two to the under in their previous seven. Uh, they're also 6-2 and two to the under uh, in their last eight. <laughs> I don't know why I wrote it down like that. But regardless, I'm going to lean Rams minus three in the under 50 and a half in that game. Next matchup. Chiefs, Jags, 1 o'clock, Jacksonville. The Chiefs are minus 3.5, totals 52. Now we have seen a little bit of, actually a significant fade of Kansas City in the early wagering. We also saw a movement downward on the total. The Chiefs open 4.5, down to 3.5, total open 52.5, down to 52 even. 66% are leaning Kansas City now, 53% shaded toward the over. Right now the Jags are plus 165 on the money line. We have Patty Mahomes for the Chiefs, Nick Foles for the Jags. Now if you like Foles in this matchup here, just keep in mind he's going up against a Patty Mahomes 
character who went 12-4 and in the regular season, threw for over 5,000 yards, 50-97, and he threw for 50 touchdown passes in the regular season. The Chiefs are 7-3 and in their last 10, 5-2 and in their last 7, taking on the AFC South. They finished first in the AFC West at 12-4, and and they uh, obviously made it to the AFC Championship game Arguably better than the Patriots last year. Now, on the other side, the Jags, they finished dead last in the AFC South. They were just bad. 5-11 uh, and 11 on the year, failing to cover in 10 out of their previous dozen ball games. They're also just 4-6 and six against the spread in their last 10, taking on the Chiefs, if you're into historical trends. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean Kansas City, minus 3.5, and the over 52 in that game.